Day 76, May the 2nd, leaving Salisbury, heading up the Intersector Trail. Hopefully have a good day today. Uh, the mileage to shelters don't work out well for me today. I might have to do 27, so if I, if I do, then I'm going to take a couple of breaks and try to rest the feet. I've got to do 110. That's the next resupply point that we want to hit. So I'm going to try to be there Saturday sometime. So anyway, heading out. and go over Bear Mountain today. Everybody talks about how awesome it is. So I look forward to seeing it. Very quiet and peaceful out today. All right, y'all, it is May. I don't think I forgot. Like a day in May is a go. Um, just to clarify, this isn't like a, unless you want to put together something in your local area with people who live close to you. This is just an individual family or couple or person thing. And what you're going to do is just, uh, and it's however you want to do it. But the objectives would be to push yourself out of your comfort zone one day, try getting up earlier on a Saturday, preferably, or a Sunday, or whatever day you can make it work if you work on the weekends and day on the weekdays, obviously. Get up, eat healthy, plan your route, do everything you do, kind of if you were out here, and then go out and walk. Walk farther than you even think that you can. Push your children just a little bit farther when they think they're tired not to make it miserable uh, just to just to show you and them and everybody that you can do it because I know you can do it um, and then the rewards got to come afterwards even every day I have some kind of reward at dinner or um, you know some happy food so plan that reward carry through and uh, then tell us about it. I look forward to start hearing your comments. So let's just execute it, Will, and let us know how it went. I'm excited to hear about it. Ha ha, ha ha. Ain't nothing like a big rock up when you got a pack full of more food than you really need in about 10 days, but your ass is too stupid to pull the food back out. It's all good though, y'all. I'm gonna make this climb my B I, you know what? And then tonight I'm gonna pig out because I got food. Word, here we go. Y'all see that right there? All the way to Katahdin, y'all. All right, y'all gotta brag on my wife real quick. What an amazing, amazing woman. Uh, she called today, and y'all know my boat's still sitting in my driveway. Well, clearly we live in a neighborhood. Clearly they don't like that, but it aggravates us because man, the boats should be in the lake. But because of the owner of our neighborhood and whatnot, there is no water in the lake because he just let the dam deteriorate and now won't pay for the repairs. But yet the, the committee um, still wants to hold people accountable for having their boats in their driveway and the only reason they're there is because there's no water in the freaking lake so she got a letter she called this morning just i could tell it upset her a lot and again like that bugs me to death i'm leaving all this for her to take care of but she's a strong woman and i heard the the vehemence in her voice of She's like, I got this. Don't worry about that. I got this. Like, oh boy. She rarely calls and lets people have it. But when she does, oh boy. You just don't want to be on the receiving end of it. Anyway, she's still been just focused on, so focused on helping me get to Katahdin and get supplies in. And just amazing. Amazing woman. So Mrs. ER, I love you. And uh, as we talk about hike a day in May, she's not going to be able to set up a Facebook account and stuff. And I'll be honest with you, we are not social a social media family. 
my son is much more than us we do not have a facebook account i call it face space still just to make fun of combination of it and my space but uh if somebody out there and if this doesn't make sense tell me but if somebody out there wants to start the facebook account and manage it we're all about it but i just know man that's gonna be too much of a pain in the butt for her for me to ask her to do that and manage while she's doing all this other stuff so if somebody wants to do it please do so you have my blessing just let us know what it is um and let us know what we need to do to access it all right y'all oh and before i forget so i'm torn how to approach this but i'll just be straight with you i stayed at vanessa brenton's house she offers she's got one room with four beds in it she offers through hikers it's 40 bucks i think for the night and then five dollars for laundry she does laundry for you if cleanliness is your thing this ain't your place if you have any kind of cat or dog allergies this ain't your place um if you get grossed out by a kitchen full of dishes that don't look like they've been washed in about a year this ain't your place positives of the place she's a very nice woman um, it is right behind sweet williams and right across the street from the post office so everything's quick and easy shower and bathroom were clean and the bed was very comfortable um, there's another lady in town that provides beds i can't speak for that one but just know that vanessa has two cats two dogs they're very sweet i'm an animal person so i don't mind it too bad um, but this won't be a lot of people's place so just keep that in mind if salisbury's your stop all right y'all tell y'all uh, i just uh, stopped by a creek i'm doing some forest hydration today so if i pass by a good water source i have to drink at least my little water bottle and then i'll fill it back up um, and i appreciate dave i know you left some water out here at 15 18 i think around there mile marker so i'm sure that will be a blessing today brother i appreciate you spending your monday doing that for us um sidetrack real quick because i'm gonna tell a quick story about the marine corps uh but somebody asked about my job that i currently do and man i know there's like 75 videos so i'm not going to be the the db douchebag that says hey man go back and find that comment and figure it out but uh yeah i just i'm not going to talk about what i currently do not that i'm trying to hide anything it's just i just work um yeah, i just work in a capacity that just don't want to discuss publicly but what i will talk about is my past military experience and so marine corps right so my first four years in the military were in the marine corps we were at boot camp. I was at Paris Island in 1989, August through November, and I actually graduated on the Marine Corps birthday, November 10th, 1989, which was badass because the Marine Corps Silent Drill Team came to Paris Island and performed at our graduation ceremony. So hard to believe it's been that long ago, almost 30 years. Feels like it was yesterday. But during uh, my time at Paris Island, we had what was called forced hydration. And the reason being, the advent of mothers of america had just come about and that's where um group of mothers i guess got together to protect their sons in the military uh, to make sure that they weren't training out in extreme temperatures and whatnot so they came up with the um, flag system the color flag system and if it was black flag that means it's a certain temperature and certain humidity level and you can't go outside or you can only do like 10 minutes of work and 50 minutes of rest then you had a red flag and it was a certain temperature range yellow flag down to a green flag which means you're good to go so <clears throat> the drill instructors hated it because that tied their hands to what they could do to you outside couldn't train as much because paris islands it might as well be one of the, on the third level of hell because it's hot as hell um so what they would do so what part of the agreement was they had to make sure the recruits were hydrating so this is what we term forced hydration so we get done eating chow we come back to the barracks 
we'd all be lined up on the um, in front of our racks and they would say go grab a canteen so you come back grab a canteen they say drink it now so you'd have to down the whole canteen and then they say go fill it up now so you'd have to run to the head go fill up your canteen come back out drink that canteen now so you drink the canteen that canteen and they know if you drink it or not because you got to hold it up over your head um, upside down to make sure that you drank it all so depending on the day and how aggravated they were depends on how many or how bad you did at something that day i remember we were at the rifle range and we performed pretty poorly one day so we were drinking a lot of water and uh <laughs> and we were on about our third canteen luckily i never threw up from it but most everybody else did i just imagine it was ice cold budweiser and that kind of helped um i was drinking i was drinking budweiser back then that's back in old redneck days so we were at the rifle range that same day and people were throwing up and i mean there was just throw up all in front so we're lined up in front of our racks and there's two rows so you're facing across from another guy and there's like 60 of us in the platoon so we're all standing there and there's throw up all down the floor and he was like go get your scuzz brush now and scuzz brush is this little horsehair brush um kind of like a just a little brush that you'd hold in your hand to sweep up the floor with real stiff bristles so we'd get down at that and they would call the drill instructors would call scuzz brush race now and so we'd race so we'd have to get to the end of the squad bay you would lean over put both hands on top of your brush kind of like in a downward dog position and then you'd push with your feet and you'd slide on your brush your hands are sliding on your brush all the way down through the squad bay well we were doing this through the throw up this day so you would <laughs> be pushing your scuzz brush hit somebody's throw up and just slide and rolling all in the throw up and i know people are like oh my god but man that's just the way it was and this drill instructor sergeant piss man he was awesome doesn't sound like he's awesome to most people but he was a combat warrior at the time and i loved him i respected him um even though i disagreed with that but this guy was harder than nails this is a long story but i think it's worth it so there's this redheaded dude named davis he always he was in the rack right across from me he was from atlanta we went through meps together ended up in the same platoon well that same day he had eaten carrots at the chow hall so kids if and women or whoever if you're easily squeamish you might want to fast forward this story so we were drinking that water and david was one of the first ones to regurgitate his water in his chow sergeant pitts came down the squad bay and looked at him he's like damn davis you wasn't hungry like, that's some good food laid on the floor i can't believe you just wasted that he bends down picks up this full chunk of carrot puts it in his mouth and swallows it and says davis that was a good carrot i can't believe you let that go and he turns around and walks away my mouth <laughs> basically dropped open um that's one of the hardest men i've ever met in my life and he just does it for effect but y'all was 30 years later and the effect is still there that was a mean son of a bitch sorry earmuffs noah cooper that was a mean son of a bitch but in the end when i graduated um my dad was there and my dad was a marine too he went through paris island like 26 years before i did and that was his first time back at paris island sergeant pence went up and found my dad and said mr free you got a good son here he's gonna be a damn good marine made my life um that was one of those moments uh that will live with me till i die all right y'all that's my marine corps story i know that was long hope it was worth it ha 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 summit of bear mountain i'm on the giant rock pile for those who have been here before visibility's really good today actually you can see uh, it's probably 25 yards maybe anyway trail's gonna give you what it gives you i'll have to uh just believe that it's beautiful down there i'm sure it is it was good to hear bigfoot's recollection when he's up here he was doing the connecticut challenge and 
he said he summited this at about 10 o'clock at night and uh that sounded like that was a spiritual spiritual um experience for him that's pretty cool my experience so far climb up not bad at all i hear the climb down sucks and as you can see as slippery as it can be this probably won't be fun but we're gonna move on the highest ground in connecticut 2354 feet nice Woo! All I can tell you is I just fell all the way down this. Luckily slid on my butt so I didn't get hurt, but this coming down is treacherous. Again, I'm not bitching about the way they routed it. That's a cool walk up. I wish it was dry today because there's no footing on any kind of ground besides rock here and they are as slick as ice. So very dangerous coming down Bear Mountain. Hey, update on monetizing the videos so, uh, we can raise the money for charity, specifically St. Jude's and probably Humane Society. Um, I've done all the backside work now and thanks to Bigfoot, I know how to do it when AdSense and YouTube finally approve my channel to be monetized, which hopefully will happen sometime in the next couple of days. And then we're gonna get it on. Check this out right behind me. Oh. Ah, freaking love that. That is awesome. Woo! Love it. Yeah, so hopefully soon you'll start seeing ads pop up. Sorry for the pain there, but man, just know every time you click on view, you're helping us put some uh, money in some family's hands. And if Surely, I think most of us know about St. Jude's just because it's so advertised on TV. Y'all check this out behind me. Hold on. What? Gorgeous down here. It's been a long time since we've seen some stuff like this. I love it. That is beautiful. Let's look at that again. Yeah, so... Hopefully, um, it'll be soon. And for St. Jude's, man, like those families that go there with their sick children, which just about makes me tear up right now after just saying it, man, they don't get one dime in bills when they leave there. So I've been, uh, I've been an advocate of them for a long time. Me and my wife give, wish we'd give more, wish we could give more every year. Um, just a great charity. So anyway, just wanted to tell you that it's coming. Sorry for that. And uh, know that you're going to be a part of something bigger than all of us. What? This place is gorgeous. It'll be hard to make miles today. Too many things to see. Goodbye, Connecticut, man. Favorite state so far. Definitely. Loved it. Y'all have it going on, and I will be back. All right, y'all, I got Zach here. He came out and found me. I'm just inside of Massachusetts, probably maybe 0.5 if that. And, uh, man, he just gave me a cherry Coke, a Gatorade, has some Sour Patch Kids. Zach, uh, man, just give us a rundown of who you are. Yeah, so I'm taking the day off from school. Wanted to come out and meet you. I tried on Sunday, but I think you and I both got rained out. So, yeah, uh, no doubt. I'm glad I was able to catch up with you today. Uh, what school are you going to? This is interesting to me. I go to the University of Hartford. I uh, just finished up my accounting degree. Uh, undergrad or, or grad? A uh, little bit of both. I got my undergrad there and I'm going to do my master's. Almost done. That's awesome, buddy. Yeah, it was be great. Good. It was great to meet you, man. Yeah, These you too. bugs have just crazy. swarmed us, man. All right, we're out. Really good to meet you today, Zach. That was uh, the welcome surprise. First person I've seen since I started walking today. I appreciate it, buddy. Um, that, that cherry coke, I was telling him. You get to Salisbury, you try to find a cherry coke, you ain't gonna do it. They don't have them. So that's the first cherry coke I've had in a day or two. Let's just say I was Jones in a little bit. He put the fire out. Thanks, buddy. 
Oh my God. Best view in a month or more. This is one of my favorite views that I can recall right now. This is amazing. Just crested Mount Everest, or Mount Everett. I feel like Mount Everest. Hey, I would suggest, man, those are uh, two pretty tough climbs, and it looks like they're not, we're not done for the day. The miles are coming slow today. Like, I ain't even been 12 miles yet, y'all, and it's five and a half hours. That's slow. I would suggest if you stay in Salisbury, Man, slack pack this section. Get over this. It's beautiful. It'll give you more, more of your senses. At the, you won't be so tired when you get to the top of these things. You can enjoy them a little bit more. And uh, yeah, hindsight. If I knew it was gonna be this tough, it ain't terrible. Uh, but definitely, ah, damn it. Definitely good slack packing day right here. All right, y'all, I'm at Mount Everett viewpoint. And there's a little uh, shelter right here. I don't know if this is the secret shelter or what they were talking about, but pretty cool. And I'm on a nice bench. And if you can't tell, I'm getting swarmed by bugs. Damn gnats, man. Holy cow. Anyway, all right, I've only done 11.7 today, man. It's uh, slow going, but we got some flat land coming up later. So we're just going to be patient and stick with it and try to keep the feet going good and get our 27 in today and if not we'll uh we'll just look at making it up later all right y'all yeah before you come out i would figure out what kind of bug net you want to use um head net because i'm telling you without this net on right now this would be unbearable y'all can see probably in the camera uh, with the net they don't bother me um i also have i don't think i told you guys but i ordered an ex officio it's like a I can't remember the name of it when it gets here. I'll, I'll let you know what it is, but it's a It's like a jacket a long sleeve very lightweight jacket That's just made of basically net and it's got a couple of pockets on it um, And it's basically just a bug jacket and it's treated with permethrin and um, It's got a hood on it. It just doesn't cover your face um, But man it gets great reviews people are saying black flies and gnats and stuff won't even land on a on the shirt So I've got one of those coming Normally they're like 80 bucks, but uh, there's a couple of colors that doesn't look like they're selling well. So I got one of the, I mean, it looks cool to me. I don't care, but it costs 31 bucks at exofficio.com. So you might want to check that out if you're coming out. And uh, hopefully that's going to help with these bugs a bit. But you still got to deal with them in your face. So you got to have some kind of net. Man, I just can't stress how dangerous some of these freaking trails are down these rocks, man. Like that's probably the fifth time I have taken a serious tumble today and just broke a pole. This is uh, almost out of control, man. Anyway, keep moving on. Figure out what we're gonna do with the pole. All right, y'all. So I finally got down off of that buffoonery after falling at least probably 15 to 20 times. Some of them very serious falls. Broken pole falls, smashed elbow falls. Listen to Early Riser, all those who are going to through hike. Even, um, I would offer this to uh, those coming up right behind me too. Greeter, maybe even you, buddy. When you get to Salisbury, find a better place to stay than what I stayed. And maybe do a, like, if I had to do today over again, I would have slack packed that right there. Now, maybe it's going to be a little different when everything's dry if you come through. But those downhills being wet are... Man, I don't even know how to frame this. They're more than treacherous. Like, there's no good foothold. They force you to put both your feet on the same slippery rock, which is just a recipe for disaster. All right, y'all. Chatty Kathy knows this is going to be a long video today. If you've ever noticed or hadn't realized that the day out of town is usually really long videos because I feel good. Today, though... 
has beat me up. I've still got 9.9 .9 to the shelf there. My knees are screaming. And by the way, I've got two the single bands my wife bought me at Walmart trying to protect that patella tendon, but those downhills today, brutal. Um, kudos to Lecky. Wife's already been on the phone with him. Service rep is forwarding a new pole to the hotel I'm going to be staying at Saturday, which sucks because i got to walk the next three days without a pole. Well, this one's kind of just short. Like, anyway, it'll work, but i got to make something up for my tent until then. Um, question of the day. And this is serious, and I'm, this is, this is going to be contentious to some people, and I get it. But I'm tired of playing around with these choices, so we're going to come to some consensus today. And if you don't like it, and you don't like what we come, like what we vote for, then you're more than welcome to unsubscribe. So the question before us today is, what is the best candy bar when you're hiking? Because I will tell you, I'm a little upset right now. I got enamored by this giant three musketeers. Three musketeers that was uh, sitting in the grocery store the other day. Because it's huge, it's the double ones. The one that's got two in it. And so I was just trying to eat a happy candy bar when I just came down off a non-fun downhill. And it's just like whipped air. And I'm no stranger to a three musketeer, y'all. Like. I understand what I was getting myself into. But this is the most unsatisfying candy bar I've had since I've been out here. So, what I need is everybody who can comment to comment. If you're out here and you had one candy bar and you just got done doing something brutal. Let's just say you got done finished at Katahdin. You just summited. But you're hungry and you need some energy and all you want is a candy bar what candy bar would you reach for and why all right made it here david it's about 337 man appreciate it bro i'm gonna make good use of this you're the heat man oh you can see the trash bag's still empty so if any hiker dumps their doggone hiker trash in there for you to take away it wasn't me buddy again thank you man water's coming in handy Last battle of Shays Rebellion right here, 1787. All of us military history nuts, that's pretty damn cool. All right, y'all, right down from the trail. Cross over, I think, Highway 7. Great finds, antiques, art, furniture. In there they have uh, water and soda for sale. What? It is, I don't know if y'all can see that, 427. I still got some miles to do. I'm fixing my feet. They get wet coming through those fields, man. It's soppy down there. It sucks. Anyway, fixing them real quick, I get to the shelter. All right, I'm going to ask this only because I think if I don't, some of you will get mad at me for maybe not letting you help. So, my new trekking pole is going to be here. Um, so, well, when I get to the hotel on Saturday in Bennington, Vermont, that's going to leave uh, three days without a pole. I've got it, and it's kind of short, and it'll work uphill. And they're only sending me the uh, middle and the lower part. My upper piece is still really good, so i still got to carry this thing. But if anybody that lives near has a trekking pole, and it can be any kind, I don't care. Hopefully an older one, that if I break it, you ain't going to be upset. Or I can buy you a new one, it ain't no big deal. But if anybody has one that they can drop off at a trailhead I'll be crossing tomorrow, man, I'd be forever in your debt. I can live without it. But it's just going to be a pain setting up my tent, trying to find a stick every night. So if anybody has one and can get it to a trailhead and just leave my name on it, 
Um, I sure would appreciate it. And if we can't make it work, man, that's okay too. Early risers are gonna press on regardless. All right, y'all, so ticks. The subject is ticks, and I'm moving through this grass right here. And yes, I'm supposed to be pointing the camera down. And if you don't know, ticks love to climb up on the blade of grass and just wait for you to come by and brush so they can jump off on your, on your body. And I have just stopped and found about 15 ticks on these blades of grass. Oh, and there's another one. Y'all see that? Where is he? Oh, right there. Damn it, do I have it on camera? <laughs> you little bastard. I know why I'm having so much problem getting him on camera. But he's just waiting. There he is. God, it took me forever. Sorry, y'all. He's just waiting. Waiting. So a lot of people think you get more in the woods. Man, you will get more walking through these damn fields. That I love. But man, they are full of freaking ticks. Hey, y'all. I just met Dave, the guy who laid out the water. And he runs the cruise to, uh, that, uh, takes care of the maintenance for the trail down here. I had stopped, I walked over a bridge and had stopped to spray more bug juice on me. So I knew I'd be walking through some more of these fields with these damn ticks. And um, yeah, he pulled up, that was awesome. Good to meet you, Dave. You're a good guy. He said he left me a cherry coke up here too, so he's even a better guy than I thought. Dave, I appreciate it. And again, it's past two o'clock, so of course I forgot to break out the camera. Um, but I tell you, man, he used to live in Alpharetta, Georgia, too, which is right by my hometown. So anyway, it's good to reminisce with him for a little while. Now it's time to go. All right, y'all. Dave, you're going to see this video tomorrow and be mad that I, I didn't even tell you that I broke my pole today. And Because I bet you probably have a dozen poles sitting at your house. I don't know why I didn't ask you again this afternoon, man. My brain don't work right. Uh, I'm not, man, you've done enough for me today. Somebody else make him hook me up, but don't be mad at me that I didn't ask. It wasn't on purpose. Um, but I appreciate the water and the coke, brother. And just meeting you. That was awesome. All right, y'all, I'm gonna be signing off for the evening. I've still got about two to the shelter. I may turn it back on at the shelter, but it's going on 6.30. By the time I get there, man, if nobody's in the shelter, I may just sit up in there and I'm gonna have to uh, cook my dinner and uh, get the bed made. So I may close out today, but it's gonna be a long video anyway, so I'll let it uh, conclude with that amazing view. All right, y'all, made it. Good Lord, he wasn't lying. Those porcupines do eat on those bunks. Holy cow. Never knew they'd do that. How they even get up there? All right. I'm, uh, I'm sleeping in the shelter tonight. Hopefully the uh, porcupines won't eat on me. Not the clearest water behind the shelter, but... Sawyer squeeze should help. It's better than that rusty water.